Hey, it's the Chief Bonnie with Board Games with a review of the tank expansion for the Great War. So what's the tank expansion? Well, the Great War is part of the Command and Color system, but it's World War I. I've done a review on the Great War already. For all the close-up details, please go check that out. I think I even, that might have been the last review I did for the Dice Tower. However, um, the tank expansion, first of all, everything comes from PSC, Plastic Soldier Company, out of England. Um, they did some spectacular tank miniatures. Uh, the Mark IV, male, female, and the A7V. I think I finally got it right. I keep forgetting that. Um, so used to my World War II tanks. Uh, the Big Heavy. Um, and then there's a little Whippet expansion. Sorry, they're all right here. Um, so they look phenomenal. But how do they play? By the way, you get field artillery too. Whoop. Let's go ahead and take a look. I'll show you. All right. I wanted to open just zoomed in on the new pieces you're going to get. I'm going to cover these real quick. And... Um, I'll talk briefly about how a regular game goes, but it's going to mostly be on just what the expansion is. So clearly, you get some new tanks. So first of all, let me show you the difference between these two. You're going to notice that this little protuberance here uh, is a cannon. Uh, now, I've broken off their little fragile, the cannon that would normally be here. But the way the British called their Mark IV tanks... They call them Mark IVs, although uh, these will op also represent your Mark Ones that, that are in the game. And um, these are the female Mark IVs. They don't have a cannon. And the ones that have the cannon sticking out, they call the male Mark IVs. Now you're going to notice there's a little token on here. Um, the token is two-sided, so you'll have one uh, for the German tank as well. Uh, but the way um, the tokens are used is just like hit points. And so if you take a hit on a tank and you've got a token, that comes off. You take another hit and the tank itself will be destroyed. So you're going to see some tokens. You're going to see these um, beautiful, highly detailed, if I can keep it in focus here, tanks, which are very nicely sculpted. I'll grab the A7V German tank. This is a heavy German tank. It's considered male and female. It has both cannons and machine guns on it. And the rules state that. This is all the nomenclature of the time. Now, historically, I think only 20 of these were ever made and served in combat. But uh, they're pictured here. And uh, it has two. See, I don't have them handy. There you go. It'll have two of these markers that'll sit on it or in the hex. And then it's a separate little standalone, but you have a Whippet. And uh, the Whippet is a, a lighter tank. It's uh, also going to have one little token on it. And all it has is the uh, area here with machine guns. And so it's also considered, quote unquote, a female tank. Now you're going to get some terrain tiles. You're going to get a bridge. On the flip side, you're going to have a destroyed bridge. Uh, they do talk about something very interesting here is that uh, some of the scenarios will attach an engineer to one of your squads. And they say at this point in time, there is not an engineer figure. Kind of like how you have the machine gun guys, the mortar guys, um, a bomber. Uh, but they're talking about engineer figures being out in the future. Well, they can help you repair a bridge. Um, you've got, in conjunction with that bridge, you've got river tokens. That's just for us there, extra token. Um, a river, depending on the scenario, can represent either a kind of a smaller, fordable creek that you can move across. You usually have to stop when you enter it, and then you can proceed. Or it's a huge river, and you can only cross at a bridge. So, so those work. You have fortified positions, which can be used in conjunction with any terrain tile. My autofocus is going to make me keep it down here. Any terrain tile um, except barbed wire. And it basically adds, um, think of it as a plus one. I'll get into that a little bit more later when we talk about trench defenses or what force gives you. Um, and I'll explain how that works. But it's just what you would think. It's extra protection. Uh, very interesting. This is a German marker. The Germans would end up capturing the Mark IV tanks or the Mark I tanks. 
they would paint them with their color scheme. So if you're uh, in some scenarios, you're going to have a Mark IV tank that's actually going to be German, and you'll just mark it as such. Uh, let's see. Oh, love these. So a uh, a tank would often get stuck in the in the terrain. It would simply stop working or break down, and it would have to be fixed. So you have these big tokens or uh, tiles that will lay down next to a tank, or sometimes I'll put them on the tank, that'll tell you this tank is bogged down, it's stuck. You can also abandon a tank, which is why they show this one that has the, it's a Mark IV with the German marker on it. And the reason you might want to do that is it's worth less victory points if it's destroyed uh, and it's been abandoned. A lot of times they would continue to fire on an abandoned tank just so it couldn't be reoccupied later, which is something you can do uh, in the scenarios as well. So you can bog down, and if you bog down, you do have the option of getting out of dodge, and that's all that this is going to show you. These are the tokens that are on top of the tanks. Just think of them as additional hit points. And you do get a... Uh, a group of figurines that you have to cut off of their plastic tree, and then you've got to put this field artillery piece together. So in the original um, uh, full version of the game, The Great War, you had off-board artillery pieces represented by these uh, tiles. You'll still have that going on in this game, but you're also going to have quote-unquote field artillery which is these guys and their crews. And they will be on the board. They can take damage. They can get knocked out. They can get weakened. Uh, they can shoot at things that aren't in line of sight. Uh, and you've got two of these as well. Um, also, I should say you've got two of every one of these. You've got six tanks total. So two German tanks, two Mark IV females, two Mark IV males, and then the whippets come separately, and there are three of them. Let me uh, break down kind of basic, just in case you've never played Command and Color system. I'm going to break down how the general system works. I'm going to try to keep that very, very brief. And then I'll go in and explain in detail how the tanks work and how the field artillery works. And then, All right, I just wanted to explain real quick, for those that have never played a Command and Color system, the board itself is broken into three sections. Left, you can see the dotted line going down. The middle portion, you can see just a touch of the dotted line, and then it picks up, runs all the way through, creates the middle, and then your right flank. So right flank, middle, or center, and left flank. Those will correspond with your command cards, and you're going to have a set of these cards, and they're, they're all slightly different. I mean, you'll, you'll have some that are the same as well, just like showing here, all right, where these are, uh, this is an attack center, this is a probe center. So the probe center is going to allow me to activate two units that are in the middle portion, whereas an attack center would allow me to activate three in that, in that area. But you can see, here I've got assault right, okay, and here it explains that I can order units that are all on the right section. So I can issue an order to all battlefield units in that right area. So everybody, not just two, not just three like I showed you, everybody on that right side is going to be able to activate. Now, I've played games where you end up with one unit over there, but you really need to move them. <laughs> and you're like, great, okay, it's not nearly as helpful for me. Similar probe left, I'm moving to attack right. So you're these cards will end up functioning in a fog of war basis. So the cards operate fog of war. You don't always have the cards you want to do exactly what you want to do on the map. You may get, be getting attacked on your left flank, their right, and you don't have cards to activate these guys. You just don't have the cards. Uh, now, they don't know what you have. Uh, you keep that to yourself. But you're stuck between, do I hold on to this card, or do I use it to try to move units up into attack? Do I hold in defense? That's the beauty of Borg's system. Now, you also will have combat cards, and you can get these uh, using um, HQ tokens. And so you're going to have tokens that you're going to start the game with, depending on the scenario. But as you're rolling dice, which is the other key part of this um, system, you can earn 
HQ tokens. Now it gets into the minutia of if I'm doing this and a follow-up attack and do you still, so I'm not going to get into that, but just know that you can earn more of these, which can be used to do, uh, think of their headquarters, they're like command and control that allows you to do some more things with your cards. So talking about the dice, the dice allow you to do a roll and to immediately, that would be a great roll, um, see what you have, and that one just went on the floor, to see what the effect has been. I'm going to go in in a little bit and show how these work in conjunction with the tanks, but needless to say, generally if you roll, uh, this blast is going to be a hit, generally a guaranteed hit. Uh, this will be a hit on troops, but sometimes, and this is a quirk of this World War I system, the Great War, um, you can, um, depending on your terrain, instead of rolling less dice as the attacker, the defender actually gets to ignore some hits. That's a little bit of a twist with this system. So um, if, uh, if I'm in a trench, I could ignore two hits, two soldier hits, but I would not be able to ignore a blast. That would still be a hit. If I was in a trench, I'm just going to continue using the trench, I can ignore a retreat flag. I can actually ignore two retreat flags. So you could do an attack where you're only rolling three dice, and I could roll, um, well, if I rolled what's here now, I might get some headquarters tokens, but the unit I attacked would just ignore that retreat flag. If they were out in the open, however, they would be forced to move backwards. So terrain provides you the ability to kind of absorb some hits that may or may not come from the dice. I'll dive in. I'm going to show an example of tank combat. They all really kind of combat um, very similar. similarly. You have cannon in the uh, two male or male and female tanks, and then you just have the machine gun coverage with the, uh, the female uh, Mark IV and the Whippet. We'll go in. Oh, and field artillery works very much like regular artillery, but it's on board. It's attackable. Um, it's movable. Uh, and other than that, it's, it's very much, it even is the same figure, but in 3D live with troops that can take hits, and you get two of these. So I'll go in and I'm going to show a simple attack formation with the troops here and how it factors in, and I'll show you what the range of the tanks are and how close combat works and ranged combat works. All right, I'm zoomed in on an A7V German tank. You can see it here. I've got two hit counters on it. It hasn't been struck yet. I've got a rifle infantry team in the open, which... God knows they wouldn't want to be there if this was the case, but they are. They are not adjacent. They're actually two away. Same here. And I've got a rifle unit in a trench. So I want to first show, ignore these guys at the second. I'm going to set them up to end up showing close combat in a second. I could probably even get rid of that unit, but we're going to leave it as is. So if this unit was, let's just say, firing at these guys in the open, they don't have any terrain modifiers that are going to help protect them. So they're in the open. And if this was the result, so they're two hexes away. Let me bring it on and show. All right. So this is where the tank is. Close combat, you can see the parentheses. They would be rolling four dice. But we're not doing close combat. We're doing ranged combat. So we're two away. You'll be rolling three dice. You can see if we were three away, we would be rolling two dice. And if we were four away, we would be only rolling one die. So we're doing ranged combat with three dice. And we're going to say it was attacking this unit here, this rifle company. All right. At a range of two, the deadly dice are in effect and they count as hits. Otherwise, if it was a further range, they would just be misses. So this unit would take one hit for the soldier and they would take another hit for the deadly die, they would lose two, that would have left two guys still present, and they would have had to retreat one. And they have to retreat back toward their lines. That would be good for them in this case, because they would end up in a trench. But that's how the uh, system of dice works. So let's move the tank up into here. Let me get these guys back into a trench, and we'll leave the same exact result. All right, I moved in to show some close combat with this unit. 
I'm going to leave the dice here. The markers are still here and we'll cover what the tank will do after combat or even when moving in a second, but I wanted to show a close combat. So this would be a ranged combat with three dice with troops in the open and the deadly die would be able to, uh, would be in effect. But a tank ha cannot ignore units that are adjacent to them. So even though that is a juicy target, the tank must focus on these units that are adjacent. So not being fired out here, assume this is the roll. It's close combat, so four dice would be rolled. We're gonna add one more, and we'll just say it was this result here. In close combat, we're not paying attention to the deadly die. So this trenched unit would be able to ignore both of these infantry hits. They wouldn't affect, and they're able to ignore, again, because of the terrain, that retreat flag. And I know it's a little hard to see that. The yellow is a retreat flag. So if that was the die result in close combat, you would have had no hits here. But I wanted to show the interesting nature of this is the one I would probably want to fire at, or maybe I would have maneuvered in a way that I wouldn't be right up on this trench. But this is what you would have to do if you're adjacent. Now let's assume I was back over here, and I did fire on this unit, and I was able to get this result. So we're back to ranged combat, it's two hexes, one and two. He would have taken three losses and a retreat. So three units would have been gone. He would have retreated back one. And then I have no choice but to advance. So it's not an option. I must push forward toward the unit that I attacked. I should have probably had him oriented toward him. See, this is one problem when I keep these on here they fall off. It's a little fiddly. So he would have advanced toward that unit. It's called gaining ground. So gaining ground is only when you uh, force a unit to retreat back like it did here, or if I had been in close combat like the scenario I showed you with these guys and the units eliminated, the tank not gets to, it must advance. It must gain the ground. Sometimes you don't want to push forward but you must. After gaining ground, you do have a chance generally, and I'm not going to get lost in the weeds here to do what's called a bonus combat. I'm going to explain bogging down next, so we'll get to that. It's basically getting stuck or breaking down, but depending on the type of tank you have, you will generally get to do one more type of combat. Um, so your you're gaining ground after a retreat or an annihilation of a close of a unit in close combat. So you've gained ground, and now you're generally going to get a bonus combat. It breaks down based on the kind of tank you have, male tank, female tank, adjacents, and some other things. All right, let me explain being bogged down with this Mark IV tank. So it can move two hexes, so it moves into its first one. It doesn't have to check for the bog, but now... If it's going to move again, it does have to check since it's its first uh, or well, its second movement. It doesn't have to check on the first one. has to roll one die. Now, there could be modifiers. If I was rolling into a trench instead, that would mean an extra die. So it would be that second movement and it would be into a trench. Or if I had a crater right here, that would add one in. So then I would have to roll two dice, and if I were to roll a deadly die, that would cause the tank to bog down and get stuck. Now remember, if I just had an enemy retreat, I'm going to gain ground and I have to move forward, I would roll one die for that as well. Um, or if I was gaining ground after eliminating a unit, I would also have to roll a die then because this is in gaining ground. So it's a possibility that I could have to gain ground and I'm going into a crater, in which case I would be rolling two dice and the chances are, well, you start to go up and get higher chances that you might bog down. That's why you don't have an option but to gain ground. It causes a little bit of chaos um, uh, out in the playing field with your tanks.
All right, so this tank is bogged. This Mark IV is bogged. How do I get them unbogged? All right, they call it a bogged down recovery. Yes, I've said bogged several times. So he's stuck. How do I get him unstuck? The A7V, the Mark IVs, male or female, and the Whippets all get one die. Um, they're going to roll that die, but they can actually throw in a headquarters token and pick up three more dice per headquarters token. So if you want them unstuck, and you've got the headquarters tokens to spend, you can add several more dice. Now I will tell you that the Mark 1s, which you will use the Mark 4 tank when you're playing with the much older Mark 1s, they get no recovery dice. When you roll for a recovery, you want to get the HQ token. Now they'll tell you right in the rules, this does not mean you recollect more HQ tokens. All right, that happens in a normal battle, but in a recovery, this is just saying it was successful. And if you can get one of these, they're now unbogged, boop, and they're free to maneuver again. Now let's say I failed that roll. All right, so I failed it. And, sorry, I'm getting ready to go to that. So I fail the bog recovery. And I decide I need to get out of there. This tank is going to get killed, and I'm going to end up giving extra victory points to my opponent. I can abandon or ditch, let me get it the right way. I can ditch that tank, in which case I'm going to flip it to its ditch side and I get my units out of there. They're abandoning that tank. Main reason you're going to do it is if now it gets destroyed and it can still be targeted and destroyed even though it's empty, it's only going to give my opponent one victory medal if it's eliminated. All right, let me just show you um, the Whippets range since I've explained that. So close combat is three. You can see uh, range combat out to two is three, two, one. So they don't have the four. They're not using deadly dice. And I think I missed on one roll as soon as I flipped to this to show you that. When they're trying to recover from being bogged, they actually will start, they will start with two dice. I'm going to show you the field artillery the same way. Let me flip to it. So you can see the same thing. The key here is they do not have to be in line of sight. They're able to arch their rounds. So you can see the close combat, and then 2 2 2 one, 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 out to some distant range, and it breaks down um, the dice and how they're factoring in, and they're very slow to move. They can only move one hex, and then they cannot battle if they moved. They basically had to limber up and then unlimber. They also don't suffer from tank shrekin. If I didn't explain tank shrekin, I went through a couple examples a couple times. Tank shrekin, uh, if you're under its effect, it means uh, you can't ignore the flags due to your terrain. So, um, like I said, I think I got that in there, but just in case I didn't. So they're not affected by that. They've got a big gun, and they'll just uh, fire right back at the tank. All right, I've got a regular infantry crew set up to attack an A7V. Now in a little bit, where's my bomber? I can find him. Boom, I had him set up. I'm going to add in a bomber here in a little bit, just to show the difference. Because when you're attacking a tank, the only thing that's going to matter is how many bursts that you get. So do everything normal. Um, so you're going to determine that infantry at range uh, two, so it's not close combat. Infantry would be rolling two dice, and you would simply roll the dice. The kicker is you've got to get a burst symbol. Again, they're going to ignore the first flag. So if you had two flags, that second one would matter. But they get to ignore. They must, not get to, they must ignore the first one. In this case, you roll your two dice. Because there's a bomber there, Hits will affect the tank on a burst and on a deadly die. So assume that's the first roll. You now must re-roll these dice. Now if this tank was bogged down at that point in time, let's just throw a bogged down marker. If the tank's bogged down, you're going in to reconfirm these hits. Now, holy moly, we just blew those fellas up. Watch out. 
and they're back in the trench. All right, so if I'd rolled this, this is perfect. Uh, not counting for HQ points, not a burst or a deadly die, and it would have ended up being, hey, you hit the tank, but it didn't penetrate. And that is how your tank combat's going to work. Uh, also to note, you do not take in terrain if there were a terrain modifier, uh, if you were on a trench. The tank does not get to take in any of those modifiers. You do collect the HQ tokens in the very first roll, but when you're doing the second roll to confirm the hit, if you get an HQ token at that point in time, you don't get to layer those in, so it's only on the first roll. And just to show you the brief overall page for the scenarios, the Somme I'm familiar with. There's some of these. I'm not a World War I expert at all. So I figured if I just showed you, rather than me just list off one after the other, you could see the scenarios that are included with this. So uh, that gives you a feel. All right, so first of all, these look great. I would say the highlight of PSC so far for me has been these tanks. Um, some of you, if you go watch the uh, the original, uh, The Great War, I don't mind the, the figures. Um, cutting them out, I broke a lot of bayonets. That was the only frustrating part. But these are phenomenal. They look great. Uh, the little soldiers look great too. But these are also a little fragile. So um, unlike Memoir 44 where a two-year-old could play with the tanks, these aren't in my opinion, as much toys as they are kind of more delicate models. So keep that in mind. They do come um, packaged safely. Uh, they, they look wonderful. They're already painted, uh, stickered or painted. I can't tell if those are, I think there's, yeah, there's some stickers. They look great. So that is awesome. They look awesome on the map. They look awesome on a shelf. Uh, they play great. You do have, if you noticed, when they take hits, you got those extra little chits. And I like to throw them on top of the tank. They sit better on the Mark IVs than they do on the uh, A7Vs. They fall off, and I'll usually just put those in the hex. Um, so there's a little bit of upkeep there, but nothing bad. Um, tank rules. I think it's great. Uh, the use of the, uh, the deadly die... Uh, the fact that if they're in close combat, if they've got a unit adjacent to them, they can't decide, you know what, we're going to ignore these guys. I want to hit these dudes way over here. So it allows you, even as the infantry, if you're wanting to, to purposely close in and use the tactic to really get up and hug that tank and then maybe run some guys across, you know, get out of the trench and go. The tank's not going to shoot at you at this point in time. So there's some beautiful little tactics you can use to maybe suck that tank in. The fact that the tank ignores the first flag no matter what. So the tank may want to retreat, and if it gets one flag, uh, it can't retreat. It has to, has to ignore it. The, uh, the gaining ground that uh, if they're in close combat and they eliminate the units, they must move forward. And then they got to check for the bog down. Um, uh, same deal if they get a uh, retreat with flags and they, they move forward. So you see this push and pull with these tanks as they come in. I did not play all the scenarios. There's a bunch in there. All I played was the opening scenarios to get familiar with uh, the German tanks and the English tanks and to see how the mechanics work. My son loves this game. Uh, when I got the original version with just the uh, the troops and the off-board artillery, uh, he had such a fun time and he, he had no idea what World War One was. I think he was nine at the time. Boom, we're up and playing and he's like, can we play again? Can we switch sides? Yes. And he loves the little miniatures. Um, so the whip it's great. That's the bonus little extra here where you get the tinier little tank. Again, looks gorgeous. The field artillery, uh, wonderful. It's not off board. They can be hit. They can move. They can't move fast. And when they move, they can't shoot. But now you can pick at them. They don't have line of sight issues. They can lob their rounds wherever they need to go. Um, 
Uh, let's see, the, uh, adding rivers, great. That's good. Bridges that can be blown up or forded. I was extremely intrigued with the little note in the rules that there will be engineers that will be added probably, hopefully in the future, kind of like how you have the, the bomber guy. Um, and then, that's not this one, but the French troops are supposed to be coming soon. One thing that you're going to get with this that you should expect, and it looks like PSC is going to be putting out more product, is that command and color system really is, allows you, if you end up, you love World War I, or you love this particular way Command & Colors works in World War I, you can layer in, you can add the tanks. Looks like you're going to be able to add the French. Hopefully they'll keep adding uh, other units as well, especially hearing that they've got engineers. What else might they add? Um, I don't know. So that's the intriguing part. But as far as an expansion goes, adding in these tanks, fun, flavorful, beautiful to look at, Beautiful to pick up and handle, but gently. Oh, so gently. Chief, bonded with board games. See you guys.